Hey, I'm Tony Collin, the How To Hero, and in this video, we're going to be changing out the brushes in our DeWalt 611 handheld palm router. I've got this thing arrived in our Bob's KL744 CNC router, and I've had it going for about a week. Now, that seems really short amount of time, but we had some pine rounds come in that have about a two hour cut in each one. Let's say we ran this thing 24 to 30 hours, pretty well continuous over the weekend, and the brushes just failed on us. So, we're going to get to changing those brushes right now. Now, typically with the DeWalt Palm Router, there's an on off switch on the right hand side or the left hand side here, and it's got on and off on it. And typically, when you turn it on, it comes on. Now, you can see there's a light that comes on with the DeWalt Palm Router, but we're not getting anything spinning. When I turned this thing off the other day, it actually was grinding pretty, pretty bad, and it was sparking here in the little display window goes to the motor. So that's a dead on indicator that our brushes have failed. I've even tried to hit it again to get it to grind for you so you can hear that awful noise that it makes, but it's not going to do anything. So we're just going to turn this back off, disconnect power, and start changing these brushes. First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to loosen the set screw inside the KL744 that holds our router in place. And so we've got our DeWalt 611 palm router out of the CNC holder and we got it just laying here on our table so we don't have to undo all of our cables. I'm going to show you how to do this anyway. So you can take, first we'll have to take off four screws and they used, they use either the T20 Torx bit or they use a little small flathead. We're going to use a Torx bit because we have on hand right the second and we're just going to take off these four screws and that takes the yellow cap off the top of the palm router. Don't be intimidated by this thing. It's just a piece of machinery. Electric motors fail quite regularly. Most people don't realize that. And they're usually fairly easy to repair. Brushes and contacts being one of the most common reasons an electric motor fails because it's a movable part against another immovable part and they just fail. I was in the Marine Corps doing avionics and you know, you learn that stuff pretty well off the first little bit and you'd be surprised at how many pieces of equipment people throw away, whether it be TVs, VCRs, things like that, that literally can be fixed for just a few dollars. Now, back when Radio Shack was around, you could get all your resistors and things like that fairly easy. Of course, now that Amazon's around, it's even more easy than it was. So, you know, just order you some parts and repair it. And man, with the internet, there's so many in YouTube, there's so many how-to videos on how to do this stuff that it's, uh, there's no reason to throw good pieces of equipment away when all it takes is just a few dollars. These, res uh, these, these brushes were, I think, like seven bucks, seven or eleven dollars, I can't remember which. I'll put a link down in the video description for how much these things were. They were stupid cheap, though. I mean... You figure the router's like $139 and this thing was and this thing was uh eleven dollars, let's say eleven dollars to fix. Eleven, I'm sorry, it's eleven dollars. I think it's eleven dollars, but it comes with two full sets. So you get four 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 of the uh, brushes for cheap money. And don't drop the screws like I just did. Alright. Well, or just pour them out on the thing. Pour pour them out. Just pour them out. Remember the long ones going the long side, short ones going the short side. Should be fairly easy to understand and explain. All right, we got that. So, I mean, these things are completely gone. They, I mean, they're like stupid gone. All right, so let me get a small flathead screwdriver and we'll dig into these things even more up close. Now this is sideways because my the way my router is, it's easier to do it sideways. Let's see if we can get a better view of it here. Okay, so we've got a little spring here, and this spring is pushing that, pushing the, uh, pushing the bend, uh, the brushings, brushings in. So we're gonna hook that spring and hook it around that piece right there. Let's see if we can get a little bit better focus on this. Yeah. Oh shoot. Okay, just fight me then. Okay, so we hook this spring and we hook it around this little holder right here. And then we've got our 
Then we've got this little piece right here. That's your brushes. So we need to pull it off, unclip it. It just pulls out. And then the bushes, brushes just pull out of the side just like that. So remember, it goes in like that. It slides, the, the wire slides in through this little piece right here. And I'm gonna take some pictures of this. I'll put the pictures, still pictures in the video so you can see it. The wire slides through there and it rides in there together. All right, let me get a brush out real quick so we can change one out. You're thinking, Tony, there's no way, there's no way that you ran this thing out that quick. But I wanna show you, that's the new one versus the old one. Over three, I'd say that's a little over halfway eaten up. So, easy enough, right? Take our DeWalt router, stick the brushes back in, the new brushes in, the wire will ride there, Clip it back on, or clip it on, not back on, because this is a new one, so it didn't, it's the first time it's been in here. Clip it on to the, on there. And then take the spring and unhook it from there, and it pushes back into our brushes, which make it make contact with the motor. Again, I'll take pictures of all this so that you can see. All right, here's the other side. Again, we're gonna take our screwdriver, grab a hold of our spring retainer. Whoop, that just went around the other side, so we don't wanna do that. Not that it's gonna hurt anything, we just don't want it to, we want it to be in the right spot. We want it to be an easy spot to hold. So right here, and it's kinda of hard to do this with one hand, holding it. All right, so we've hooked it around there, see? We're gonna pull the brushes. Well, we don't have to do that, I'm sorry. We're going to take the clip, unclip it, and then pull the brushes out. Look at that, I mean, look how small that brush is. That thing was, it was gone, I mean, it was, it was toast. One of our Amazon brushes here that we got for really cheap. Just remember, the back of the brush that faces outward has a groove in it, so it's really simple to do. We're gonna take that and slide it back in the hole for the brushes. It slides down a little shaft there. Slides down that little shaft. And then we're gonna clip that onto the little metal tab. Onto the little metal tab. There we go. All right. Once that's back inserted, release the spring back into the back of the brushes, and there you go. You've got it set in pla place, ready to go. All right. Then take your router cover, put it back in place. Make sure you've got your wire, secure wire, because this is going to be where you're it's going to hold your wires in place. You don't want that to come loose either. It'll be all the way seated. Go in there. Take our starter. T20 Torx bits back in. Get those started well. And then we'll just tighten them up to the required tightness.
And my next video will be how to repair a socket wrench that doesn't want to tighten. It's stripped out in there, I guess. Why is it when you do a video, nothing wants to work right? I mean, obviously the router wasn't supposed to work because it was the video about how to fix it, but you'd think the wrenches would work. Okay, I've got to get a different wrench because that one is absolutely dead. Let's try this again, YouTube world. We're tightening, tightening. Oh, look at that, so much better. Tightening, oh, that one's already done. Tightening our Torx bits down, our Torx nuts and screws down so that we can put our router back in place and get it back started. Tighten down. All right. Going to set it back in our router here. All right. Let's go plug it back in. Let's see if this bad boy works now. Look at that. Like a charm. And that's all there was to it. Just changing those bits out, those brushes out. Have our router back in the game. Now we'll tighten our, our tighten our holding clamp back down. There you have it. That's how we fix our DeWalt 611 handheld palm router that we have riding our KL744 Bob CNC. Pretty easy to fix for like $11 total and it gets you two sets so I won't, I won't be down for another few days next time it goes out. I just have to make sure I have them on order and keep them in stock. So that, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out our other videos. And I know this video beat the video out where I assembled the KL744, but that's like 30 hours of footage I've got to go through and putting it together. And I will get that done and throw it on the channel so everybody can watch it if they want to. But that's how you do that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, by the way, we just passed 3,000 subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thanks for subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. And it's been a wild ride to know that I went from zero to 3,000, over 3,000 now. And we're, you know, and I, I'm one of those people that I'll tell you like it is. I'm actually receiving a little income from YouTube. And it's awesome to have a little bit of extra freedom over something I enjoy doing, like videos, showing people how to do stuff. So thanks so much again. You guys rock.